for the French uh, National Research Center for Computer Science, and they hired me to, to work on Métis. Uh, just a quick show of hands, how many of you have heard of Métis before? How many of you have actually tried it? Sorry. Alright, so um, I had my spare time with a Java developer working on Go packages and X uh, drivers. Alright, so first I'll go a quick recap of what Matisse is, what it does, what it doesn't do, uh, where it is today, and where, what are some of the goals that I, uh, I want to see, some of the things I want to see and I want to do, work on, and some of the problems I've been having in the past, past six months. So, uh, Matisse is not a 3D desktop, that's something, uh, uh, it's actually the name of a paper that was published about Matisse. Matisse is, uh, has, you know, has three, core, uh, three core parts. It's actually an X server, it has a window manager, it has a compiler. So, in terms of uh, overall architecture, it's kind of like the early components that had XGL. So, that's very similar. Um, uh, Matisse is first and foremost it's a research project by two uh, French colleagues of mine, Nicolas Roussel and Olivier Chapuis. There are the two guys that started Matisse in 2001, and later on uh, Olivier came uh, in 2003. Um, so it's been going on for, for a little while, and it's really it's a uh, it's a test bed for new ideas. Basically, any wacky ideas they come up. Uh, I work in an HCI team. Uh, so basically, any kind of uh, wacky idea that the team is going to have about window management, uh, desktop interactions, this sort of stuff, they kind of throw it at uh, Matisse and hopefully it'll work. Uh, most of the time it doesn't, it's really crappy, but you know, out of ten, every ten ideas that they have, maybe there's one good that will stick around for longer than a couple of days. So that's really the main idea behind Matisse. Um, a lot of people have been asking that question in the past uh, couple of years or so. Matisse uh, is not meant to be competitive to companies. First, because Matisse was kind of there, there before. So, uh, and then the, the, the objectives are really different. Matisse uh, is a research project. Compass is a software for, for distributions and for that is really meant to be stable and uh, with a, with, a, with a good architecture and a maintainable code. So there's really two different objectives. But, Matisse is meant to be usable. I mean, what good is it if you have a window manager that crashes every five seconds? Uh, you can't really work with it, and sometimes uh, you want experiments to last longer than 20 minutes. You want actually people using it, getting feedback to you, and telling, and then tell, them telling you what, uh, what they like, what they don't like. So it's really meant to be uh, to be usable every day. Uh, I've been using it for six months. Uh, Olivier has been using it for about four years now. Uh, it is a work. Uh, it is a working solution for every day. Um, just some quick historical background, really, um, just to get in the, the more side view how Matisse came to what it is today. First started as a uh, toolkit, which is called Video Space, which was published in 2001. And so, Video Space was this, a project to uh, interact with with videos, mostly in an open jail context. Um, and at one point, uh, with other researcher who worked on Video Space, decided, well, why can't I just mix videos? I just want, I, I, I might want to plug in regular applications into that. So he worked on, uh, he morphed video space into Amatista as a way to stream uh, X-Window applications into his video uh, experiments. So he was able to display regular X applications uh, into his video uh, composite. Um, so and to, to do that, uh, just a quick uh, recap. This is 2003. For some of you, it's like ancient times in the open source development. Uh, this is when Fedora Core came out, you know, 2.2, and to the X crowd, it's when X386, 4.3 was released. So it's like prehistory. Um, so how it worked is it's based on XBNT, and it was really a major hack. It 
it's a wonder it even worked. Uh, so there was this XVNC server with uh, homemade tiling window manager because XVNC only exports the global frame buffer. So basically, if you want if you want a single texture for each window, which you do want in a compositor uh, environment. Um, and you would have to tile your windows next to each other so that they, they never overlap. And so he had to write, he had to write uh, the tiling window manager um, so that the, the windows would stick to, uh, right next to each other. And then on the on the compositor side, there was a 3D window manager, but it was not really a window manager. It had just very basic features like picking and moving. It, had, it wasn't really a window manager to any kind of standard you would think of. It was very primitive. But it worked. Uh, it was not usable on a day-to-day -day basis, but it was enough uh, to, to get some really cool demos out. Um, so now we come to Matisse. So Matisse was published, the paper was published, at uh, US uh, 2005, US is an HCI conference. Um, and so now we're back to a, a more traditional uh, architecture. So there's the XPT server, which is based, uh, which is a fork of uh, X386 uh, a couple years ago, into which uh, was incorporated a per window frame buffer uh, mechanism. And on top of which sits a standard uh, window X11 window manager. In our case, it's uh, IVWM. Um, this one was chosen because it's very flexible. Uh, a lot of experiments have been done with the IVWM, and it has it has this really awkward configuration language. And when you read when you read the, the configuration files, I mean, you have really have to wrap your head around it, but. Uh, but it's very flexible and and you can do a lot of stuff. So basically, Matisse uh, uses FBWM with a compositor plugin, uh, which does all the OpenGL rendering, like uh, Compiz or others. And then there's the, I mean, not proprietary because it's all open source, but a private protocol between uh, XMatisse and the compositor module. Uh, to transfer uh, the face maps and everything. Of course, it uses shared memory if you're on the same machine. But there's a there's a real protocol in between um, for uh, for um, uh, mobile usage. Uh, I'll get to that a bit later. Um, so the architecture for Matisse basically like this. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, all of you have been using uh, Compass before using before using your uh, XCOM. That's basically how it all works. You have your X applications. They contact an XMT server that that doesn't drive any output of any sort. And then you have the compiler here that takes the the, the fix maps uh, from the XMT server and that displays it with OpenGL and a bunch of transforms. And so it's all very uh, <coughs> there's not really not much to it. So now there's a there's a demo. Demo time. <laughs> All right. So uh, if any of you want to try this at home, there is absolutely no problem. This is a box standard Mandriva 2008, which was released like two months ago. Uh, when, during the install, it's going to actually ask you if you want to install the keys. Just click yes, and and you'll have this like all put up on the you know, any effort on your part. So. Um, one of the basic operations you can do with Matisse uh, um, is window transformations. So it's uh, you know it's a basic, uh, very basic uh, transformation. You can. rotate the, the, the windows around pretty much any axis you would think of. Um, you can you can this 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 seems rather trivial uh, to do. Basically you can do any any sort of open shell transformation on your windows. Um, and while while windows are in a rotated state, you can still work on uh, you can basically do anything you want. Uh, 
everything, everything still works as it should be. Pop-up menus, they'll work. So this is not very useful script. I'll, I'll mention that. Uh, rotating and uh, some positions are really useless. But uh, another thing you can do is scale. This is actually much more, much more interesting. So this is like, uh, this is not resizing. This is really scaling. So again, um, the, this you get for free out of the OpenGL transfer. Um, you're going to tell me what's the point of scaling here. Uh, everyone you can resize, or uh, there's no real point in that. But an interesting thing you can do really uh, is that you can you can get zoom for free uh, out of this uh, out of this too. And this is really interesting when you have old uh, legacy applications and you have this big 30-inch Apple screen, Apple Cinema display, which is like 2,600 wide by 1,000. Thousand pixels, and you have this tiny motif application, which you can't scale, which you can't resize, but you can scale it with that, and uh, the, the application doesn't even know it's being rescaled. So this is this is an interesting feature for accessibility, and uh, and just sometimes you might want to zoom in on something. So this you can this is something you can do. Another operation uh, you can do is uh, when you have uh, multiple windows overlapping, uh, you can you can fold windows to see what's beneath it. Um, again, that's not very useful. It's uh, it's kind of like this flashy demo. Uh, but this is just to, to show you. This is one of the things um, that. The, the, the team um, looks at, and I mean, I don't know if it's useful for anybody. It's definitely not very useful for me as it is, but someone might find it useful in another context. So this is one of the possibilities that the team, the team has. Uh, and actually, so this folding uh, technique um, on its own is not very useful, but it does have uh, a nice uh, one nice application which is copy pasting. So for instance if you run uh, if you run um, let's just say you want to copy some some data uh, and you have overlapping windows you can start a drag and drop a selection operation from uh, from your terminal, and the, the window will fold, bringing this one to the top. And once you release your uh, your mouse button, the, the window uh, comes back and jumps back and unrolls, and you can paste it, uh, again. So this might seem really trivial, but uh, in in uh, tests that were done by the team, this is actually the, the faster way of doing copy-pasting. Um, again, copy-pasting seems really trivial, but if you're an office office worker, this is something you'll do. This is not something that we programmers do uh, much, but office workers might do this thousands of times every, uh, every day. And so even like a 0.1 second increase uh, could, be, could, be, could be worth something for them. So this is... Uh, this is the kind of interaction techniques that the, the Matisse is all about. Uh, it's re really interactions between windows. Uh, it's not really targeted at inside what's going on inside the windows. Um, another feature of Matisse is based on the uh, FBWM pager. So we have a standard, I don't know if you guys can see it, we have this standard uh, FBWM pager here, which we have extended. So um, FBWM uses pages rather than desktops. This is an, uh, um, an old X difference. Uh, basically, <coughs> there, there's a, there are subtle differences between virtual pages and virtual desktops. Um, once you use virtual pages, uh, you still get to keep your windows around. That's one of the features. And uh, using this pager, uh, we have the global 
global desktop view. Uh, but uh, this is really uh, another feature, a feature specific to Matisse, is that you can still interact with Windows when you're in the global uh, global desktop view. Uh, you can move uh, Windows around. You can change your desktops and have menus. You might even want to zoom in and have uh, your windows while watching everything else. Uh, this is the, the, the kind of things that you can do. Um, what else? Zoom right back in. Um, another feature of Matisse uh, when it comes to, to, to window management is, uh, we call that feature facade. Um, so a feature of Matisse is a uh, user uh, basically modifying existing uh, existing applications uh, without without their consent. Uh, for instance, let's uh, I'll take Gimp for, for the sake of simplicity. But imagine an application like Photoshop on Windows that has thousands of dialogues, thousands of uh, menus, pop-ups, whatever, and, uh, and, and you can't really, you can't, it's really hard to configure. So one thing that uh, Prasad uh, implements is basically uh, copy-pasting uh, elements of the UI uh, into their own application, into their own windows. So, uh, for instance, uh, let's just say I'm working, uh, I'm working on a, uh, I just want to use um, some tools uh, that the game provides. I'll just copy paste them really. See, I'll, I'll select them and I'll basically create a new window. So the GIMP has no clue what's going on here really. I'm just taking out its buttons and it's not, I'm, I'm not asking for permission. So, um, I'll just um, so now I have my own my own uh, my own toolbar, uh, which I can use. It's uh, it's completely uh, completely functional. I can select the buttons. And you will notice that it's actually really a copy. So when I click here, in reality it's like I clicked here and vice versa. There's no really no distinction between the two. This is really a, a clone. Uh, we're really cloning uh, elements of the UI. And um, and a nice feature of that is that you can. Uh, You can save. Yeah, it has already prepared one. Uh, so you can have multiple facades available at any given time. And then you can use. Again, imagine you have. Uh, you have this uh, this huge display. You might have uh, your all your uh, expanded uh, GIMP uh, menus on the side, and then you'll have just the just the bits and pieces that you're really interested in on the other side with your window on the other side. So you can uh, really uh, you can really arrange your desktop the way you want it, and not not the way the uh, the um, application designer. Uh, really wanted to choose. So this is really, you don't have to write any uh, uh, GIMPU extensions or uh, uh, Firefox extensions in JavaScript or, uh, I mean, for even, I would say, in open office writing uh, C++ code. This is just standard X. So another uh, interesting uh, thing we, we have uh, in Matisse is uh, bimanual interaction. So 
basically, yes, excuse me, uh, can you close the other widget uh, and have the new one uh, which are functional? Which one? Yeah. Okay. Close the original tool. The original, then close the, the other one. No, uh, it's, uh, this is just, this is based on the composer. Yeah. So if I close if I close the GIMP this doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But could I? Yes, th that you can do. You can uh, you can hide the, the there's an option. Uh, I don't really handle it really, really well, but the compositor can uh, hide the, the the original window. Yes. Why did you happen to resize the gap uh, window? Aha. Um, that is tricky. <laughs> uh, uh, if you use the accessibility, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but when I was dragging. Uh, dragging, uh, selecting the, the button out here, um, it w there was window snapping. And that uses the accessibility uh, toolkit for uh, inside GNOME. And when this is enabled, uh, if some stretching is allowed, because they can keep track of, uh, of, the, tool, of the actual widget. But if you're using plain X, then you don't know what a widget is. There's actually no notion of widgets. So there's no, you, know, you don't know when the widget is resized. So yeah, you're, you're screwed. <coughs> See, it, it still works, but uh, it's not. You, 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 yeah. So yeah, uh, by manual interaction. So basically, it means using both both hands. Uh, for instance, uh, this is this is getting a pretty standard configuration. We have a laptop, and then you have a mouse. So more and more users are actually going to have a touchpad and an external mouse. So this is this is going to become this is already becoming a very standard uh, standard setup. So there's um, th there are, there are ways to explore uh, by manual interactions. So one of the uh, one of the things you can do is what's called a tool glass. So a tool glass uh, clean it up a bit. So basically, a tool glass is a window that you can control with your uh, with one of your uh, with, uh, with your mouse. So basically, see, I have uh, my uh, my USB mouse that's on the side. It still controls the cursor, and uh, I have my touchpad that's been detached from uh, X operation from uh, from the, the the pointer, and I can. Uh, oh. Once you have, it really, I'm, I'm really sorry. You're supposed, the, the two are supposed to be entirely independent. I should have checked. Um, and so you can have uh, one, one. Uh, you can control this, this tool glass with uh, with your left hand, and you can uh, control the, the the cursor with your uh, with your right hand. So of course, most people are going to wonder. I mean, what's the point of controlling two things at the same time? And most people don't. I mean, the point is not uh, is not controlling two things at the same time, doing two things at the same time. The the, the point of, uh, is, of by manual interaction is mostly to control one is to use both hands, not at the same time, but still use both hands. And so this way you can this way you can position the the, the tool glass with your left hand, and then once you're done positioning your tool glass. Uh, you can uh, use your right hand, which was uh, just still controlling the cursor, which was not far away, and do two operations like this um, in one. So, for instance, here uh, I will select the the I will select the paintbrush, and with one click I can start I can start drawing, and with another click I can start drawing in green. So this way I can I can I can draw and, and uh, if I'm if I, I can move the I relate there there's there you, the, the two are supposed to be entirely independent but I, I, I screwed up I'm sorry about that um, so this is uh, this is something uh, that that you can do or you can have two cursor uh, one 
one that you will leave on the, on the, for instance, one that you will leave around here, and one that you will uh, keep on your drawing area, and you can control both. So this is, um, Peter Hutter has been working on MPX, and at the end of uh, his talk, the talk that he did at the LCA a few weeks ago, he was wondering what kind of things that you can do with, uh, with MPX. So this is one of the possibilities uh, that you can do with MPX. There are, there are thousands of other things, but this is, this is one. Um, that's really interesting about using uh, using X for, it, for this uh, is that X is really really flexible when it's um, the, the, the X protocol and X applications and overall the, the overall architecture of X is really flexible. So this is really one great tribute to, to uh, X uh, the X community because when you read HCI papers, uh, and then said uh, Kai U.S. and all of uh, all these conferences. For instance, this uh, bimanual interaction called the, the tool glass. That, that was a paper that was written in 1995, and no one has ever implemented it because you can't do it on Windows, you can't do it on Mac, and Linux, or Unix, and X is basically the only uh, the only system that allows you to create such uh, such hacks. And so this is one thing that's really important for, uh, for X in general, is that X is a great research platform that, uh, that is much, much, so much more open than uh, anything else uh, available for researchers. So um, this, is, this is really an important, uh, important aspect. Um, another interesting feature of uh, Matisse is the uh, window, uh, it's actually an extension of, uh, of the facade feature I just uh, showed you earlier. Um, and it's the uh, window duplication. For, uh, imagine for a second that uh, <coughs> Um, imagine for a second that you're um, that you're. This is this is one thing that HCI researchers are actually looking at into. This is like the hot new thing. It's a uh, table uh, table like Microsoft Surfaces. It's like um, an LCD screen with uh, touch sensors and stuff. Like so uh, imagine that you have uh, you're working on on a table and then so the the, the screen is laid in front of you horizontally. And uh, imagine there's a colleague that, that comes up uh, in front of you and you want to work on something with him or you want to share an application. Um, you want to, you, yeah, you just want to work, do some collaborative, uh, collaborative features. So for instance, you're, you're gonna, you can duplicate a window and, and you can give him that window, basically. And since he's on the other side, Where you can make it, uh, he's standing right in front of you. So you guys, and with the MPX feature, uh, unfortunately it's not uh, it's longer working. Uh, you can give him a cursor, and you guys can both work at the same time on the same window. And this is this is totem, uh, but it works for with Firefox or uh, Xterm or whatever. So basically, you can have collaborative features for free inside inside Matisse. So yeah, most people are actually uh, developing collaborative features inside Abbey Word, uh, using XMPP and Telepathy and, and, and whatnot. But you can get it for for free using using X. And X does this, so why not use it? So, um, see, if you resize Windows. So if you resize, see the the. It works 
but it's, uh, I mean, there are issues. So yeah, uh, Matisse, uh, what's coming up in the next couple of months and weeks and years? Um, I've been starting work on a configuration interface, uh, put in some expose-like features. This is something uh, that's, that people are getting used to, so we're going to put it in. Um, maybe work on some previous configuration using standard configuration uh, tools and stuff like that. And one of the most important parts that I want to work on is Zorg integration because right now Matisse does some stuff, but it does it on its own. Um, and some things are hacks, and some things really belong uh, in Zorg. And the two colleagues I'm 